blown my mind because it's just been a great, tremendous path um, and a, a wonderful journey. So, and Candace, I've had the pleasure of working with you many times. Oh, I know, definitely. I would say our careers have crossed over and over and over again for whatever reason. And it's yeah. so funny because there's so many people in Hollywood and yet our paths seem to always cross. Exactly, exactly. And it's so funny because I was recently in Palm Springs for the 4th of July weekend. And I, um, I went out for dinner and I just so happened to be sitting next to the CEO of uh, Calabasas magazine when it was around. Um, he has other magazines. His name's Richard. Shout out to Richard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we did a holiday gift guide um, in, the, in the Calabasas magazine and, and the four girls, myself and three others were on the cover. So it was wonderful. And it, just talking about a small world, you just never know. So you've got to be nice to everybody. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Why don't you tell us some, yeah. uh, tell us some of your experiences um, being on Deal or No Deal? Because most people are, have seen you did how many episodes of that show? Wow, um, I think I did about five to six years, and uh, I think we we did over a hundred episodes. Wow, maybe we made it to maybe we made it to a hundred episodes. So, and that's a lot because I know that there's producers out there and doing their show and their thing, and they're they're still trying to get to the hundredth show or the fiftieth show, you know. But it depends on when you start, I guess, and. The production and how big it is and whatnot but uh but no my my journey on deal or no deal um it started out a good friend of ours a mutual friend of ours claudia jordan um she called me and said oh deal or no deal is coming back around because the previous year they had um auditioned for it and I went in I don't think I went in to see them the first year maybe the second year it came around and Claudia called she's like Lisa Lee cool gig and you're perfect for it. I went for it so I went in and I did the audition and I had a shoot to do that afternoon and and uh the audition went well really well um but it was just so funny because the guy auditioning me, the casting director, was sitting and bouncing on one of those uh, gym balls. Uh, what? <laughs> the exercise you know what ball. <laughs> you know, not a regular exercise ball. Yes, thank you. And uh, I was, I was just like, okay. And he didn't have the video ready to film any audition part, like you normally do. When you go in for an audition, you get, hi, my name's Lisa, I'm from blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but no, I ended up getting the job and, and rushing to my uh, shoot and making it. But um, those were the crazy days. That's when modeling it was intense. It was great. We were working 24 hours, not 24 hours a day, but practically. Um, I was anyway. I was hustling. I was going, going, going. But... Uh, and even when I was on Deal or No Deal, I also hosted a, a travel show, uh, Bikini Destinations. Um, oh, that's right. Tell us about that, because I know you traveled all over the world for Bikini Destinations. I did. I did. It was wonderful. I, I had such a blessed time traveling and exploring many cultures and, uh, and the world, parts that I'd never go think about. But, um, but no, it was wonderful, wonderful crew. And that really makes a difference. Your crew team, they all have, we all have to mesh and work together. And if you can't do that, then it's just, why are you there? You know, but uh, behind, behind the scenes, it's not all the glitz and glamor as, as a lot of people think, you know what I mean? So Hollywood shows that and it, it really pushes that out there for, for people and it's unfortunate because it's in today's society that's a lot of young it's influencing a lot of teenagers a lot of uh other people that i don't know get mixed signals um 
yeah, it's it's just very intriguing to me. Well, you know, and that's a, another reason why you wanted to come on today, because you guys that are seeing Lisa right now, I know you recognize her, and she's been on the, I mean, literally on the cover of Maxim's uh, calendar. You've seen her on covers of magazines. She's been inside magazines. She's been, I mean, I remember being in Las Vegas with you, and we walked past a, uh, <laughs> a gambling machine. Lisa was on the machine. And then we saw a guy pass yeah. by, and I said, hey, that's her on the machine. And he looked, and he was laughing, and then he goes, no, wait. That's you on the machine. Like he, <laughs> he couldn't believe it. He, like it could not, it could not fix in his mind that the model story, that's yeah. standing there is actually the person on the machine. So I mean, you I just, know, right? you've been everywhere. But you know, you really bring up a good point, and I'm so glad you said that. Let's talk about that. That there's uh, an image that Hollywood portray portrays that the life yes. is perfect. That you're on the cover of yeah. these magazines everywhere. Everything is fine, and yet. They don't see the difficulties and the challenges that people experience being here elsewhere. So let's talk about this as a part of your journey because you have had yes. difficulties and challenges in your life. And I told everybody who's here today, Lisa coming on because she wants to talk about how she was able to overcome them. She has uh, 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 words of positivity, encouragement for you. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and, and how you overcame it. And, and, and let's just talk about this in, in general right now. All right, first I just have to have a little bit of water. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. So while she's drinking her water, you know, we're just gonna be talking about some of the challenges that you guys might not have known that she had well, she was on Deal or No Deal when you saw her every single night, when she was on the cover of mm -hmm. magazines, and everybody's thinking, everybody's thinking her life is perfect, and then maybe you need to be like this, you know, supermodel. But let's talk about that. Okay, where do we want to start? Um, <laughs> okay, uh, like I said, life isn't all glitz and glamour, especially here in Hollywood. And for me, I've definitely paved, I paved my way and had a great career because I worked hard. Um, I really did. I worked really hard to get to that level of my career. Um, and then I think at my pinnacle point, um, Back in 2015, I had a really good job and I lost it. And I was there for five years, five or six years. Um, but it was time for me to move on, which was fine. Uh, however, from there, 2015, my life kind of took a turn and started going downhill. And the modeling dried up. The wasn't as much um, and yeah and like the auditions just weren't there um, and also too having been a model on Deal or No Deal we kind of shut ourselves out a lot of other work um, having been tied up to the studio and, and working and the rehearsals and dress rehearsals and whatnot um, it's all very exhausting. We were on our feet, for example, deal or no deal. We were on our feet for up to 12, 13 hours, um, at least one day, standing in heels. And that's no fun. Um, and that's for a good three or four days worth of taping. Um, anyway, back to my downhill slope. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a nice journey. And then back in 2000 and end of 2017 my my health my mental health my mental well-being it's still hard for me to really talk about it but i want to share it because i'm coming through it on a positive uh this is one reason why i didn't wear mascara today guys <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, uh, if if anybody can come through a traumatic experience, I have to give myself a, a pat on the back because it was really hard having been through what I've been from 2015. Excuse me. <laughs> 2015 to 2000 and now, <laughs> 22. 
Um, but back in 2018, I ended up having a nervous breakdown. And I think it was, it was a combination of many things. It was a combination of my, my, my life, my relationship, my, my um, apartment, my financial situation, my car situation, all the things you need that are vital to live in LA, <laughs> um, pretty much. So all that just kind of disappeared and my health suffered my mental health, my mental well-being suffered. Um, and I had to go home back to Australia just for love and support um, that I wasn't getting elsewhere. And a blessing because had I not gone home, I might not be here today. Um, I don't want to say that, but I mean, I don't mean it like that, but... <sighs> I wouldn't be in the place that I'm in today where I'm better in a better position um, mentally healthy uh, health wise probably not emotionally <laughs> yet but uh, I'm just I'm a, a typical Scorpio that just is a very sensitive Scorpio and uh, I cry a lot so <laughs> um, but no my, my positive uh, outlook on this is life is short you've got to make the best of it you've got to go with the flow and just live it you know you can't plan you can plan for a future but if that doesn't work you've got to have a backup um if your backup doesn't fa work if, if that fails then you need uh an ex uh what do you call it uh an exit <laughs> but that exit has to be positive not negative because if you go negative, it's just all, the universe is just gonna flush that all to you. But if you stay and think positive, the universe is gonna give you, you know, all what you need to make you better. Like, uh, how do I explain that? Um, I'm a big believer in the universe. If you put that energy out there, it will come back to you in a good way. If that makes sense, sense. Uh, do you have a question for me, Candace? <laughs> you know, it's so funny because, uh, you know, a, a couple key points that you said, you said that, you know, I've always been a hard worker. You really have been a hard worker. And I'll tell you guys Thank why. You. Because I've seen times, we've we've traveled many times together for work, and uh, we've even worked for a mutual friend of ours, and I've seen you and I both working for a friend of ours, and there you are every single mm -hmm. morning looking perfect, working in high heels, <laughs> face on everything i'm slumping in in sweats and i'm always a, a marveled at <laughs> how you are able to do this and i've even asked you before how are you able to do this you just get up and you do it and i've seen well, you work these hard jobs and, and tell me about like deal or deal because i remember you telling me a long time ago that you guys would uh you would do successive episodes in one day all the changes the heels all yeah. these people it, it just sounds exhausting Seriously. <laughs> well, you know what? I I want I dreamed of that career. I uh -huh. wanted that career and uh and I'm glad I chose that career path. Um I don't uh regret it. I had many wonderful uh opportunities come my way and, and doors opened. Um and yeah, I just, but wearing heels for a very long time is not good on the feet. So, <laughs> well, but that's, that's all part of the job, you know? Do you think that um, um, the, the beginning of, like you said, of, of, of just becoming exhausted, do you think it's because this business is so hard that it yeah. contributed to it? Because I know you went and went and went and it, went and there were so many opportunities and I know that you just absolutely. went with it. Do you feel like Absolutely. you just got exhausted? You... Um, it wasn't just exhaustion. Like I said, it was an, a number. Like when you count things on your hand, they say you end up with five good friends in your life. Mm -hmm. And those five things, not the five friends, but the five good things in your life, your health, your mental well-being, your uh, 
your financial situation, your family or uh, and whatever it may be that there's five triggers and all those triggers went off in my body and it got to the point where I was jammed, locked hard for a solid two hours. Um, and I remember I was walking my dog or, and um, it just, I just, it just snapped like a trigger. And I just, I, I just stood there and stood still on the stairs for a little bit. And then I had to sit down and I was like glued to the arm rail. <laughs> um, anyway, long story short, I had, there was a, a mutual friend, again, small world, a mutual friend that came out and saw me with the dog and it was wow. getting late kind of cold and he didn't want me to be out there all night long and I would have been because I couldn't move. Wow. Like my body physically could not move. Um, it was like I, I had a stroke or I was paralyzed or something. It was just, I couldn't move. Um, and my speech was infected, uh, affected. Um, my, I couldn't put sentences together. I just, I, my whole brain cells out the door. And yes, I definitely think it was a lot of exhaustion mm -hmm. um, having to do with hard work, but also having to keep up with the lifestyle or having to keep up with paying your rent because the modeling is not, the industry is not, it's a very fickle industry, mm -hmm. the entertainment industry. So if you're not constantly on it and, and working, then you're not going to make it, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. I've had my time. I, I'm, I don't know if I still want to be out there in the entertainment industry, but, um, I, I know I had a successful career and I'm so happy with that. So I'm at peace, but, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it was a fun 20 odd years. Um, mm. but yeah. Um, What's interesting too is you say it's a fun twenty odd years, and as you say that, I am stop. I stop for a moment because I remember for us, the both of us, the beginning of that, and it seems like that. It seems like yesterday. It's hard for me when you even say I twenty know. years. It's really shocking to yeah. me. You know. So yeah. I just, I, I honestly can't believe it. When, when you say that that moment where you were sitting there with your dog, do mm -hmm. you consider that act the, that the actual moment of the breakdown? And then from there, how did you slowly start to take these pieces? You know, for people that are out there watching right now, how did you slowly take these pieces and start to put together this new life that you're talking about? Good so question. that was that the um, point that you consider it to be, and then how did you start to go from there? I I think that was definitely the beginning of February in two thousand and eighteen was my breaking point. Um, I completely shut down. Um, I was like, but before that, up leading up to that, a month or two, the spiral. Um, I was bursting into tears all the time. I was, I was a little crazy. <laughs> um, I was yelling at people in cars while they were driving <laughs> past. Yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't, I was not well. <laughs> um, and you, you may think that I, I probably, it's probably funny to talk about now or to visualize that, mm -hmm. but at the time it was, it was crazy. Who does that? Like I was literally, walking the dog and just yelling at cars. What are you looking at? Get away, get away from me. And and also too, I was diagnosed with a little bit of PT, uh, PTSD mm -hmm. um, from uh, a health issue that I had in 2015. Um, and I think just, like I said, from there it just spiraled down and it really went boom in my face. And uh, I had to go home and when I did in February, uh, 2018, I was there for a good six to eight months, mm. just soaking up the mm. love, eating all the food, fattening up and, <laughs> and um, getting healthy and my mind right, you know? Um, and, 
a lot of it too, I, I did go to doctors and none of them really knew what was going on until I saw my sister's doctor, um, lovely lady, um, a South African lady, and she's just, she hit the head, nail on the head with everything that I was suffering. Um, well, what, what, what did and, she say? Uh, when, she, when she hit the nail on the head, what were the things that she said that you uh, believe resonated? She, she realized... Yeah, she realized that I had the anxiety and that I was going through uh, a nervous breakdown and knew that my psyche wasn't right. So I had to get that uh, balanced and, and in the right, uh, the right thinking mode or the right path because there were, in my brain, there was a, a disconnect. And the disconnect was stopping me from talking and functioning. So over time, that had to take place and heal. Um, and how I did that was through quiet meditation, not meditation per se, but just quietness, still, the stillness. I just observed birds, nature. Uh, I just went back to my roots, you know? Um, and that is Australia, and it was there for me. They were there for me. My my love, my home, thank you. My 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 family, thank you. My friends, thank you. <laughs> All of those who who made me get here, and they've been baby steps, Candice. They've mm -hmm. been baby steps, it, and it's been a good three years. But uh, yeah, well, well, they've been baby steps to get to a happy place and a good, healthy mental place. Do, do you think that yeah. original disconnect that you were talking about, the disconnect that was unable for you to be able, like you said, communicate and to think straight, came from the stress yes. that culminated in the breakdown and then uh, you were experiencing this and you had the PTSD too. Um, and you guys, this is yes. somebody because uh, we have quite a few people in the chat right now. This is somebody who um, no. you guys see, and you see her on the cover of magazines. You see her every single day in Deal or No Deal. You still see her in the reruns of Deal or No Deal, and you think that her life is perfect. Uh, and so it just shows for everybody else, too, out It'll there, see. life is not perfect. You know, so do you recommend to people that are going through similar situations to also do what you did? I was just about to ask about that, about maybe seeking help, seeing a, a, oh, a psychiatrist absolutely. or a counselor. Uh, what would you suggest? Yeah. Um, I would definitely suggest surround yourself with positive people, loving people, people that are going to support you, have your back. Um, be there for you when you need them. Um, I mean, you, you don't want to become that pesty person, but if you're not well, and if you're asking for help and needing help, and your friends can see it, then do it, you know, help. It's, it's that easy. It's that easy. It's just anyone can help anyone. It's just a matter of doing it. So, but I wanted to point out before you said something about, um, oh, see, this is too, my mind's going. <laughs> um, oh, you said something earlier and, you, and he, it was perfect the way you oh, explained well, it. Let me ask you a question then too, because you had actually yeah. brought up a really good point when you said that about being okay to ask for help. I think so many of us, regardless of what industry you're in, we always have pride. And a lot of times it's hard for us to reach out to ask yeah. for help because one, we feel so independent, we can do it on our own. And two, we feel weird about doing that. But you said it was so vital. So explain how that, that being able to overcome that within yourself to be able to go out there and ask for people that you, that you need help. Because I think a lot um, of people may be grappling with that. I, I know I would. Yeah. My boyfriend at the time um, could tell that I needed help. And, and he said that to you? Not in the help. Yes. And I mean, we both needed help, but I needed help emotionally and mentally because I wasn't right but um 
this isn't, I don't want to, yeah. Um, the vital point for, I had called, it was in early February, I called my mom, was my breaking point um, of breaking down and just saying I'm broken. Mm -hmm. I was broken, Candace. And it wasn't so much the industry that did that. It was a combination of things. Because I don't want to blame the industry for ruining my life. Because <laughs> it, it didn't. It didn't. It, it blessed my life, if anything. Um, but uh, for those who are, are feeling the frustration and, and, and darkness and, and negativity and whatnot, I, I really advise you to seek help even if it's with a close friend or uh, a stranger that you don't know because sometimes it's easier to talk to a random stranger um, because you you don't know them so you, they're not judging you and you can let go more mm -hmm. you know um, yeah but my breaking point was my calling my mom and telling her I was broken and Jonathan Sorry, my boyfriend at the time was there. And uh, yeah, and we both just had a cry. And the next day or two, I was on the plane going home. <laughs> wow, see, I didn't know that. And, and you know, you bring up a really good point in saying that because you were saying it wasn't just one thing. It wasn't just the industry. I don't want to say that. It's, it's almost like what you're saying, it's the perfect storm. It's a, it's a combination yeah. of certain things. And for you guys out there too, I, I think that's really good that you said that because you come from the entertainment industry, but it's really life. It's an everybody's yeah. life. Everybody has situations that, yeah. and you guys that are out there that deal with anxiety. Um, I know you have in the past, I have, we all have. What do you do today? Because yeah. I think you gave some really good things of advice. What do you do today? Because you still have anxiety, I still have anxiety. You guys out there still have anxiety, let's be honest. So what do you do? <laughs> uh, I have it every single day. I wake up and I'm like, oh. You know, oh my gosh, you know, we're living life here. So what, every day and you're all hurting. Every day. What do um, you do and what would you uh, offer advice to people that you do each day? Like you said, baby steps, baby steps. What do you do to combat anxiety? Yeah. Um, if you're in music, start off your morning and put some music on. Wake up, get up positive oh i'm alive i'm awake yay what can i do today um put some music on dance around the house um get your body moving and, and then you get into this really cool mood and you're fine but i'm not saying that's the only thing that will help but um uh that is definitely one thing get outside go outdoors walk do some nature walks, go for a bike ride, go for a walk, go for a hike. Um, just all these things that you can do. Read a book, uh, go sit in the park, just people watch. <laughs> do what makes you happy, but do you and make you happy, you know? So, um, but I do also want to quickly say social media has a really negative impact on people's lives, I, th I think, uh, to a certain uh, degree. Um, social media can be great, but it can also be de detrimental. Uh, detrimental, um, Because like you said, uh, Candace, you pointed out that everybody th thinks that everybody's got this perfect life because they put that out there on social media. Um, me, I'm personally not, a, I don't like people prying into my private life. That's why I don't put a lot of private stuff out there. Um, and that's why this is a very uh, important and meaningful interview for me. So I thank you again for having me on the show. Oh, no, definitely one of the most, I was about to say, and I'm going to tell you later, uh, one of the most meaningful interviews, too. Because I think you're really speaking from the heart, and I know that it's resonating with everybody out there because you're not the only person. You are a person who's choosing to come out and tell everybody about this. But I guarantee you, each and every single one of us, every day, no matter what profession you're in, no matter what business you're in, or even if not, if you have families and children that you're uh, dealing with every day, that everybody deals with this type of 
anxiety. And I agree with you 100%. I'm not that much on social media anymore because I do yeah. believe that there's so much to it. There's, it's great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. But um, I also, lead, and you guys let me know too if you just like to lead, uh, lead a lot of your life in private. I don't. I, there was a point where I was like, I don't need to be putting what I'm doing on every single day. No. So I stopped. You know, yeah. I, I, maybe yeah. like once every two weeks now, I just don't really care anymore. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you yeah. know. I love get my fans, so of course I'm going to keep posting for, for them, but uh, it's it's just not going to be, you know, anything family related or or personally related. And It and might be, but not, not on a level where I'm uncomfortable with, you know. Absolutely. And I think you brought up another good point for everybody out there. Um, if you're dealing with anxiety and you're dealing with the pressures of daily life, you said baby steps and getting back to the basics. And I think that's yeah. really important. And you were saying life is so short. That's another one. So um, that wow. I think is really important. Yeah. So what are the things yeah. that... Um, is it just that you should do whatever brings you back to what you're really, really organically happy about because you mentioned nature that's mine and i just like being out in nature and i like uh quiet i like solitude yes. is, it, is it that type of a thing um that you you, you me, go back all the way back to the beginning right uh yes i am i love the beach i love the ocean i love the sand um, I like to, taking walks. I love taking walks on the beach, sunset, sunrise, whatever. Um, that's my go-to place. Uh, you like the, the hiking and walking and stuff you said, but, and I love that too. Um, especially when there's birds and, uh, pretty birds around and a lot of, uh, nature to see. Um, but it's interesting when you just sit there and, and watch a bird feed on off a tree it's it's <laughs> simple and it's so fun. it's so beautiful to see that I, I don't know I just when you're so busy and you don't stop yes to the point where you do, you are blindsided and you don't see the rest of the world but I'm so awake and alive now that I'm more awake and observe observant uh than ever before you know you, it's you, a good thing it <laughs> is you said a really important thing just now because uh a person said to me this morning it was doug jeffrey fit over 50 who people know here he said my life moves so fast that I don't remember what I did yes. 15 minutes ago. And I said, you have to watch that. Okay. And we were in the kitchen and I said, you've got to watch that because before you know it, and you guys tell me, uh, you're gonna blow through your life and it would have already been done without you taking those moments. And it makes me think too, the older we get, how important it is to stop. And like you said, it's interesting watching a bird and how he feeds. Uh, and I've always been kind of it's aware beautiful. to stop and take these, yeah, to take these moments because you're given yeah. X amount of time and you can do whatever you want to do with this time. But if you blow through it yeah, and you look back at old age and realize, oh my gosh, what have I done? You know? What did I do? Where did mm -hmm. it go? Where did time go? Exactly. Exactly, mm -hmm. Candace. It, said it. You yeah. Said it best. So then now um, going yeah. forward, like you said, and this is really important for everybody to hear too, you said you're slowly, I mean, this is a progress. This is a, uh, you, do you feel like you will always continue to work on this journey? Um, do you think you're going to get to a point where you're going to look back and say, I've accomplishment, th accomplished this? Or, because I think this is always, uh, at least for me, this is an everyday dealio. This is an everyday thing Absolutely. having to, to do. Work on yourself. Yeah, no, I, I definitely believe that working on yourself, whether it's um, for your health, uh, whether it's for wealth, <laughs> or whether it's just for pure happiness. Um, I really believe every day you should do something that scares you, something that makes you feel alive, something that uh, that rocks your world, you know, just something that makes you feel that energy circulate in and out of you. 
And like I said, my go-to is the beach and that's where I accumulate all my energy. Um, and I'm sure the nature walks and whatnot are, are your energy release and stress reliever and, and whatnot. But um, yes, and what else were you Well, I think you just, you just brought up a good point because you said whether yeah. it's for health or whether it's for wealth, do you think um, cause I, I believe this, that through our journeys, we quite often learn things that are unexpected that you didn't think you were going to learn in this journey. Did you feel like when you first came out here from, that's a big step in the first place, coming all the way from Australia, I'll tell yeah. you that. Um, but did you yeah. come out for, or... did you come out here <laughs> thinking about like a lot of people, wealth and fame, and then did the goals in life and the things that you value in life change as you've progressed on this journey because I, for me they really have progressed on this journey um yeah. a, a, to where i didn't expect but i feel like the value going on this journey yeah. and the hardships of this journey which thank god nobody told me when i first started or i wouldn't have done it uh, is, uh yeah. are more valuable <laughs> in the end tell me how they have yeah. changed and what you value now i value um myself more I value um, uh, life more. I value those little moments um, so much more mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because I can see them clearer. You know, before I had that, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, let's go. You know, like you were saying, it's just uh, it's stopping, breathing, taking those moments in and really appreciating what's in front of you so as the saying goes stop and smell the roses yeah yeah that's true <laughs> that's true and you know you talked about you just talked about self-worth too which I think is so important because I think we all struggle with that each and every day tell us how uh yeah in this journey and how yeah uh getting better and everything has affected your self-worth and then how now that you have increased self-worth, how that affects your decisions in life. Because that's what I've noticed is that the, the greater self-worth you have for everybody out there, not just people in the entertainment industry, how it, um, yeah. it, how it affects your ability to make decisions being a stronger person. Definitely. Uh... It's taken a while to build up my strength again um, to the point where I'm comfortable. And I, I mean, I, I still struggle. I'm still battling with certain issues. Sure, but everybody. I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, and my journey, I think now, is, is tuning in more to myself. Finding wow. out more about who I am as a person and as a human being and what my purpose is in life. Um, because I'm one of those people that didn't have a backup plan, a plan B, you know what I mean? So when my life went to turmoil, it really went to turmoil and um, I just went into a deep dark depression and didn't come out of it for a, a good two weeks but um but i came out of it and that's the important thing you see the light at the end of the tunnel and that's important a lot of people can't get there you know and that's sad but um and that's why like with my social media i'm kind of posting here and there uh things about mental health and mental well-being and uh, anxiety and whatnot little things you can do to make yourself feel better when you're feeling that overwhelming sensation come on so quickly um, water helps you know um, going outside and taking in the air fresh air helps um, and yeah, and just a walk around the block can even help. So those are some baby steps, I think, that get you to the bigger journey, to the bigger um, picture. 
I think those baby steps are really important because you mentioned water and taking a, a walk and everything. And I always say over and over, for me, it's, um, I have a yoga mat that just stays on the floor. I use it four times a day and uh, I breathe because uh, a lot of times anxiety, I think yeah. you guys, let me know that you build it up and build it up and build it up. And a good way just to just let it all out is to lay flat and I, I use the uh, Alexa and I put on yoga music and I turn the lights out and I just breathe because sometimes it, it doesn't mean you have to do all these fancy positions. It just, it just means you just lay there flat and get the breathing under control. Yeah, exactly. Like, like surround yourself with light and peace. And yes. just 15, 20 minutes of doing that, and it kind of resets. It's almost like having to reset yeah. the computer when you reboot it. Exactly. It, it's like, you re need <laughs> yes, you need to reboot, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Um, you brought up. Lots of times. <laughs> I you brought up a really good point because a lot of us, and I'm going to talk specifically about the entertainment industry now, but for those of you watching too, is that um, I didn't have a plan B. I, I never thought I, that far in advance. And, no. and so, you know, life changes and sometimes life makes you have this turn that you don't expect. Yeah. And, and yes. you kind of, I, but I, I've noticed that I've allowed myself to calm down and let the pages turn in the book day by day and reveal yeah. the chapter in its own time to understand what is next especially in the yeah. entertainment industry as you get older too, that it's, it's, it's a hard thing to make this adjustment that you're no longer the 20 year old ingenue. And then what do you do? And like I said, this time went by so fast. Um, so oh, it's, either. yeah, so explain that because I think that um, even if you don't have a plan B, it can unfold mm -hmm. for you if you have the, just the belief that it's going to. Unfolding. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I'm still uh, in the mis mix of deciding what my next step is in terms of work. Um, I do have some work that I'm working on, not saying that I'm completely out of work, but um, I do, I am working, but I want to, I think the direction that my breakdown uh, made me realize I want to work with people or animals and help them. You know what I mean? Like, because I don't like seeing people suffer. I really don't. And I'm not, a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I, um, I would love for, uh, for, for anyone just to, oh, uh, I lost my track of thought. It's okay because you know what? After my you guys, I'm going to call you because I've got two ideas for you right off the top of my head. So um, I'm excited about that. But like you said, ta let's talk about that, about um, that in-between time because I think we've all had it where you're segueing from one thing to another and you don't know what that other thing is going to be. Tell us, because I have this anxiety over this all the time every single day. Tell us how do you maintain emotional comfort, mental uh, uh, stability during that time where you don't know. It's almost like you're, here's one side of the lake, here's the other side of the lake, and you're smack dab in the middle of the lake, so you can't see where you, you can't go back and you can't see the shore. So if you're in the middle right there for people that are out there, how do you still stay calm, cool, collected, uh, and, and mentally focused without l losing everything. Cause I think we've all done that and, 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 and spritzed out. I've, I've done it. And I don't know you guys out there have done it. You've experienced it. What do you do in, in, in that time where you don't know what's coming next? I think our first definite first reaction, uh, to, to the panic. Just the situation is panic. Yeah. Uh, we, we instantly, out because it's like oh but uh i i think like i said those baby steps and breathing um really help um overcome that icky feeling um but yeah it's it's how do you get from i'm still trying to figure it out i'm just going with the flow candace i'm it's my it's my life and uh 
I'm work. It's now. It's now time to work on Lisa. You know, not to be in a, not in a selfish manner. It's just it's time to work on me because I gave, gave, gave so much of myself to the industry and um, work. I didn't give myself time to, to recuperate. nourish to nourish my soul. Yeah. So, so yeah. As I said, that really, that brings up a good point because you are that giving person. I've seen you give and give and give and give and give to the point of exhaustion. So then now, because you're a giver person, and I feel like I have the same trait in that it's really hard to say no to people when you want to be able to, um, like you said, you have to think it's not selfish to want to take care of yourself. I grapple with that each and every day. Uh, and, I, and, and, and even today I had to say no to something and I feel so darn guilty. So how do yeah. you, how can you tell people out there that it's important? It's not selfish to take care of the self yeah. and to prioritize that. Explain that. Yeah. And how do you say no? Hmm. I think when you've been through a breakdown and you've come through the end, whether you're, uh, in a better place or you're still in the the beginning stages of coming out of your breakdown. Uh, I I, I think we all need to nourish our inner selves and our inner kids, that little inner kid that you have in yourself. You know, when you're, when you're a little kid or when you get butterflies in your stomach, um, it, it's or you get goosebumps, which I just got. <laughs> um, I, I think it's important to keep that little kid alive in, inside you, um, because that that person is a vital part of you. Um, you know, it's a vital part of you, and if if you feel like you aren't worthy enough, then change your thoughts <laughs> because you are everyone is and it's just a matter of the way you think and how you perceive things or see things or, or whatever but um yeah it's just been a, a one big journey Candace. Well, you know, <laughs> and I'm still riding that roller coaster. <laughs> I think we all. But, uh, I'm. I'm more. As I say, we all ride uh, our own roller coaster, right? And many people see you, and they would say, "Oh, well, here's this Glee. She's done over a hundred episodes of Deal or No Deal. How can she possibly have self-esteem issues?" Yet you say you did. The how how do you yes. like uh where do you think they came on from? where do you think they came came from because like i said people they see definitely you. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah sorry i don't mean to cut, i keep cutting you off i'm so sorry no worries i gotta work on that no 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 go ahead <laughs> uh, <laughs> um i Oh gosh, I'm so bad. You tell me the, the ask me the question, and then I forget it. Oh yeah, like, like, like people I... see you as like being on Deal and Deal and being on yeah. magazines and just doing all this work, and then they they are probably saying, "Well, how can she have self esteem issues similar to me?" Yes, anybody can have self esteem issues. Um, you could be the most beautiful person in the world, the beautiful, flawless look uh inside and out um but uh i i think holding on to your your personality and your isms that you that puzzle you together that piece you together um it's it's like a, a a book a puzzle like i like i said you got to put the pieces together like you said um and i'm still putting all the pieces together yeah 
So for those of you guys out there that are, are and myself included, everybody, that are dealing with the issues, I agree with you 100% with what Lisa said is that you can't, there's no overnight fix. And I think, no. yeah, and sometimes um, it takes, you know, a lifetime to be able to slowly put it pieces. Yeah, it's like a it big, really big puzzle. And yeah. you've got to put yeah. these little pieces each day. And even like you said, what Lisa said is so important, even if it's something as simple as um, taking a walk around the block, what I said, breathing, uh, yes. you know, enjoying nature, um, animals, uh, yeah. quiet and solitude, because, you know, here in this big city, uh, I would say one of the things that we do is we don't appreciate quiet and solitude because there's noise uh, oh. and business and people and everywhere around just to be able yeah. to, um, uh, to have that peace. Yes. That's your, that's your center. You know, yes. I, I think that's yes. really, really, really important. Um, so now going yeah. forward, are you yes. doing, because I this is what I do, I used to project way into the future, and now uh, I am like, okay, I've got, if I, if I, yeah, I'm always now, this is what I tell people, and this is my advice, is that if you can't project way in the future, which is good, if you can't even do tomorrow, project today yeah. only, deal with today, and if you exactly. can't, if you can't do that, I always say look at the next hour, or even yes. look at the next 15 minutes. Exactly. They, that is a very, very, very good point that you bring up. That is very uh, important in the role of uh, coming out of a break up, a breakdown. Um, the baby steps, like I said, and those baby steps, like you said, are, um, are pieces that you're putting back together. And whether it's a, a short time or a long time it just it's up to you but you're always working on yourself but uh it's it's a journey and some people i'm i'm wanting to get more spiritually uh in tune with my my body that's where i'm at now um which i think is just mind blowing because so many things can either come up from that um, or still lay dormant and doesn't even arise or even trigger the, the brain to like want to talk but I still have foggy days um, and foggy moments uh, and you've known me for quite some time. So you you know that I, I sometimes forget my <laughs> sentence, and I'll be like, "What did I, what did I just ask?" <laughs> so, and that that I think too comes a lot with the industry being around so many different people and having to like be on all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, having to be. A persona of, of some kind. Not Lisa. The persona of Lisa. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because not yeah. only did you do Deal or No Deal, you did Price is Right. And I think that you were always on. And yeah. I think a lot of times if we're always on, it's very hard to feed the self. Because the persona that people see, it's your responsibility and it's your job. And you do a great job at it. But then at the same time, it takes up yeah, so much of your day. And then at the end of the day, you still yeah. have to have that, that me time that's not selfish. It's just the recuperation time. Yeah. It's like when a man goes into his, his man cave. I know, exactly. <laughs> well, tell us how important it is because I, I think that it's so important. We have a little bit more time. to Tell us how so important it is to take that okay. me time because I, I think so much of us run around like chickens and spinning our wheels yeah. like we're a hamster yeah. in a wheel yeah. and we don't ever stop. It. But then what yeah. happens is I feel like you get zapped. Of, of your own strength and your yes. own spirituality, like you said, and then we have to start putting it back in, right? You do, and and it's not easy too because each day it can be that that uh, that positivity can be picked at 
you know, like a bird chipping at the the seeds. Um, it's it's just a journey. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. Life is a journey. You know, I'm doing the best I can, and we can all do. We can only do the best we can, and live our lives the best way possible. That's that's all you can do. But uh, I, I I just wanna wanna say it's just important to remember the little things, and it's the little things that count. You know, sometimes it's not always the big things. I I think you just if if anything, I feel like you really hit the nail on the head there because I always say the little things are the big things, and if yes. that's the lesson that you can learn in life. It's not all the grandiosity that we think. It's the little no. things that if you look back already at this point in our lives, it's the little things that are uh, the big things. Because life, yeah. a lot of times, we don't realize it when you're young, but life is about, a lot of it is about loss. And uh, it's learning yes. to, to cope with the loss and learning to, to build new things that are going on beyond the loss. Um, exactly. Because, because that's what life is, you know? So yeah, yeah. yeah. very, very, very well put. Um, so if people want to follow you, I know that you're not that active on social media, but you are posting things that are important to you, which are talking about post. mental and I, health. And I, mm-hmm. Yes, sorry. So mm-hmm. no, go ahead. go ahead. So please let us know mm-hmm. because people that are interested can check back and see what you're posting about, like you said, mental health issues and the things that we all deal with each and every day. Uh, how would they go about doing I that? Would like- I would like to slowly open up personally on, uh, on my Instagram page, my social media, and my uh, my Facebook me- uh, platform because I would like to open up about it and make it more uh, more aware. Um, just because it's so vital to your your well being, just ha- having a nervous breakdown rattled my socks or rattled my how do they say rattled my shoes I I don't know (laughs) but um yeah I I, I definitely wasn't prepared for that so but who is who is it's just a a good thing that I came out of it and um, I'm very grateful you have so much I think value in that because I think going through the experience was not a good experience. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but because you are who you are as a personality, so many people, if they can look at you and say, Oh, Lisa Gleaf went through this. I'm really surprised. Um, it, it brings it so much closer to home that anybody, it's like, this is somebody that people look up to that looks like, like you said, from the outside, everything is perfect. You know, life is, you know, yeah. just, just picture perfect. Yeah. And then to see that yeah. uh, it can happen to anybody, I, I think makes it realize this it, is, okay. yeah, that everybody uh, has, anybody can deal with this issue, including <clears throat> somebody that is well known. Yes, absolutely. I mean, a lot of well-known people uh, hide that suffering because Mm -hmm. of who they are. But uh, for the most part, I think it's great when an A-lister or a celebrity comes out and uses that platform to benefit others Mm -hmm. um, in helping and uh, I think maybe that's where my next direction is. My, I know that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Yes. Next... Yeah. Yeah. I had some ideas so, as we were just talking right. about this. Oh, I can't wait to hear them. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I really can't. So, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Lisa, this has been just a, a terrific, terrific interview.